most people don't like change. We talk about the Gutenberg printing press. It's probably one of the great inventions in our history, right? We don't talk about saving, you know, 19.99 billion lives. We, we talk about the trolley problem. So you have written a book on the AI revolution. What gets you started? You know, building out this AI ecosystem and working with you know, a lot of different organizations worldwide, from big companies to small startups to nonprofits to government agencies. A lot of the same questions, a lot of the same concerns, a lot of the same fears were coming up. And, you know, I, I realized that trying to work with everyone one on one wasn't the most efficient way. Was there a way to actually help a lot of people at the same time? And I realized that writing a book would be one way to do that, to create, you know, a central, central repository of my knowledge that I could share with people and actually try and answer those questions and hopefully help them, help them figure out like what to do and, you know, talk about their fears and concerns. Uh, there's a lot of business people out there that they realize I need to do something. I just don't know what it is. I don't know how to get started. But if you're counting on your technical people to tell you what that is, most of them, they don't have the domain knowledge to do that. You know, your, your really smart IT guys probably don't know your day-to-day -day pain point. They don't know the things you go through. But there seems to be this, you know, feeling where people are like, well, these guys know the technology, they understand how it works. They'll tell me what I need. And that very rarely happens. It all starts with a problem. It's not problem solution, it's problem opportunity solution. So it's a new way of working, new set of capabilities, but a lot of this is going to start with business folks. Hopefully the person who gets out of the book is they, uh, they understand a little bit more about what artificial intelligence is and more importantly, what it is not. It's, I mean, it's not a magic bullet solution, but they actually can understand how they get started, what they can do. And, you know, we provide a framework in 10 steps on how do you actually figure these things out. And we try to weave it together in a way where using storytelling, relatable examples, explaining a very lay person, not technical talk, what you could actually do with AI. You know, the, kind of I call it the art of the possible, what, what's possible to actually be done so that can inspire the ideation for business people. There's one thing that uh, I particularly uh, liked, and, and it is this uh, discussion around the negative impact of artificial intelligence is usually countered with an historical analysis of how technology innovation has impacted the economy. Why don't you walk us around uh, a little bit on this historical justification of uh, technology innovation? Most people don't like change, right? And so it's the difficult thing for us and technology drives change. You know, you were referencing this, we talk about the Gutenberg printing press. It's probably one of the great inventions in our history but at the time it came out, people were very much against it. It's real easy to find fault in things, right? And that's the challenge I think we've had throughout our entire history because we're resistant to change. We're always trying to find flaws rather than say how we can make it work. And I've actually found the people that are the more like innovative thinkers or disruptive thinkers, the great entrepreneurs, they're always asking that question, how would I make this work? We're in a phase in our society where, you know, technology is fairly, you know, understood for the most part, except maybe emerging technology. Process is very mature. People are still the challenge. The common example is probably the trolley problem for self-driving cars, where we're talking about getting a situation and it has to hit one of two people, who does it hit? And it's a very legitimate question, very legitimate concern, but how often would that actually occur? I mean, they estimate it might be one out of a billion chance of that happening. In the meantime, about 20 million people a year, they either die or are permanently seriously injured in auto accidents every year, 20 million. The, uh, the benchmark studies show that number will probably get reduced by 98%, right? We don't talk about saving, you know, 19.99 billion lives. We, we talk about the trolley problem. I think that's the example of the adoption challenge that we have.